Okay. E Tomics Kanatuni. Good morning. It is coming on 10 o'clock in the AM on Saturn Day, the 5th of March 2022. In the lunar cycle, not sure. I think it's a Salmitsikitsum. I think it's the un unpredictable, deceptive moon. Um, I really don't think it's the Sa'akitsum that I was expecting the duck moon with the eggs as yet. So, means we'll have a bit of a longer summer. Six moons instead of five. That'll be all right. Um, things are starting to pick up all the same, even though we're not at the equinox yet. For me, the animals are starting to awaken and uh, disturb people and be more active in all of this. So I've got traps to check this morning. We're going over by the hospital. I've got one skunk trap and a raccoon trap. And I think if I'm missing the raccoon in this trap today, we might just climb up on the roof and see if they're even still there. Then we got to swing to the west side to look at the porcupine area. Although last night, Britt and I went over there um, just at dusk and I caught that porcupine. <laughs> there might be another one, but I caught a big one over there. Um, I'll show you a little bit of footage of that when we get to that point. But yeah, right now we're gonna go check the skunks and raccoons quick. All right. Here's the skunk trap. Empty. I caught a skunk just a few houses down yesterday morning though, so it could be the, the, the skunk that was bothering this place has already been caught in my other trap. We'll leave a little bit. Oh, it's still got kibble. All right. Let's see if there's any new fresh prints. Hello. Yeah. Well, it's probably the same one. I wouldn't think it'd be another one. They're pretty, you know, their territories don't overlap that closely. Yeah. yeah. Do we have a lot of skunks in this area, generally speaking? Yeah. yeah well, there's always, there's, there's always some, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't see anything fresh, brand new. For tracks, but so you want to leave it for another day and see what does or does not happen. Or yeah, something? we'll just go one more night. Okay, so come in tomorrow morning then. And we'll do. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, we'll see you. Bye -bye. All right, let's go check the raccoons. All right. So this trap has been here, I think four or five nights now no hits no indication of any raccoons even coming down this cedar which is I think their access point um, someone was building a little platform to try to trap them on I think maybe I will jump up on the house quick and we'll see if there's any um, indication they're even around yeah just climb up on here gotta be careful because my shoes are super slippery This is dangerous. Too dangerous, perhaps. Slippery. Fuck. The chimney's right there. Can I get to it? I don't think I can. Nope. Going back down. Oh, too slippery to check, but definitely they're not. There's no indication they've come out of there. Um, yeah, I gotta wait till the snow melts to climb up on this roof. And then we'll see. 
I don't think they're here though. Yet another empty trap here in Riverstone now. It says expected though. I didn't think there would be any animals in there. I think I caught the guy that was doing all the damage. Um, and I suspect it's just the one. But you never know. I told the city I would keep this trap out here and just monitor a little bit. Make sure there's not a second one um, before, before I call it quits on this particular project. But I do think I found the one. Um, last night, Britt and I took a drive as we normally do in the evenings just to get out of the house. Uh, swung by, I checked the trap. Just from the road I could see there was nothing in there. And then I, I thought, well, let me see if there's any indication maybe down by this, um, there's a storm drainage pond down here that has a couple of culverts draining into it. And I thought, well, I'll go down there and see if there's any indication of the porcupine's presence in those culverts. Because I was looking where, it, it's gotta be living somewhere. It doesn't have to live in a culvert. I mean, just out here on this stubble field, there's most certainly badger and coyote holes and stuff that a porcupine could easily occupy. So, um, but I thought couldn't hurt to check the culverts because culverts are an obvious place when they start popping up in the urban zone. So went over there, started poking around. The culverts are very well barred off um, from anything, you know, the size of a mature porcupine. So he wasn't in there. However, there was uh, definitely a lot of indication that a porcupine had been around. Um, I saw on a lot of the smaller Scots pine that hadn't matured at all to the size you got here, I saw fresh activity of porcupine gnawing off the bark and um, the footprints, you know, he just walked everywhere in the planters over there, checking out every bush and tree and gnawing on quite a few of them and some of them um, almost ringed around the bark. So I don't, I don't know that all those little trees and such will survive in there. But in any case, um, now I was on his trail so I followed him. I followed him out here along this ridge where they'd originally told me um, I might find him. And sure enough, at some point here, uh, a little bit further down from where I'm at right now, I found him. So um, I'm going to show the footage while I continue to just poke around here and see what else is going on on this ridge. I'm going to show you some footage of um, the capture from last night. <laughs> and I want to warn you, though, that uh, I, I wasn't entirely gentle on the porcupine. There, there, there would have been more gentle ways to go about it um, than what I took, but I was ill-prepared. You know, I was, just, I was just coming out here to check the trap maybe see where he's living and reposition the trap. But uh, coming across the actual porcupine, I was ill-prepared um, to capture him. I had to catch pole, but I didn't have a kennel. You know, I didn't have my normal equipment entirely so that I could make it an easy transition. And uh, well, you'll see what happens if you, if you care to watch, but just be warned, um, <laughs> capture of the porcupine was not, not gentle on the I don't think you know it wasn't hurt uh, but definitely uh, traumatized from the ordeal anyway here's what here's what happened
Ryan <laughs> got snow all over his face. Oh, poor guy. Okay. Oh no. Oh my poor thing. Yeah, like right there. Small. Very good. Reminds me of one of those Star Trek tribbles. It's just like a ball of fur. <laughs> Big ball. Like I couldn't even tell before <laughs> if I had his head on the you know. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, buddy. Go. I know you're all traumatized and shit, but you gotta get out of my truck. Sorry. Brought you right to a tree. Go, start climbing. Climb, I'm gonna go off. I think he's gonna jump. There. Oh, you just. You okay? Yeah, you pushed him <laughs> right in his face. All right, so we are rolling into day two with this video. It is Sunday morning, maybe just around 10 o'clock in the a.m. I finished my walk and talk with Carol, and there's a couple of things out here I wanted to show you, a couple things I wanted to talk about, but yesterday there wasn't so much. <laughs> After uh, checking those traps and all of that, I went home, took an extended nap, got up, went grocery shopping, you know, pretty dull stuff, pretty dull content, so didn't do much filming. Um, in the evening, though, Britt and I did get started uh, painting some teepee liners. This is something that uh, not a lot of guys do, you know, it's kind of time intensive not very labor intensive but it takes a long time if you want to make nice TP liners to uh, kind of you know measure everything out and tape everything off and, and take your time and without stencils or something you know make custom TP line designs and so we got our first uh, order from one of my one of my buddies up in Siksika 
uh, he had some old photographs, black and white photographs, from his inside his grandpa's teepee uh, in, back in the day. And it was a beaver lodge, uh, painted, a beaver painted lodge teepee. But the liners in it had a, a particular design, and so he asked if we could kind of replicate that design on his liners. So me and Britt got started on that. Uh, we're going to see as a kind of a first go at it how long that takes us uh, to finish those liners but I think it's going to take a while and we'll, and we'll kind of from there figure out how we're going to price things out for the future and stuff. any case I didn't do much filming last night um, or yesterday after what you saw so we're going to roll into day two here and of course I'm out here check in like every Sunday morning seeing what's up what's the news at the pond and one of the things I don't know if you can see it with this camera but I'll show you images from my other camera um, me and Carol were noticing all along the the west length here when you see these open water pools there are tracks coming out of these open water pools and, and stretching meandering out onto the ice and snow and we were looking at these and thinking what the heck is that you know the the tracks are not coming up the bank here they're staying out on the ice they're coming from the water could it be the beavers would the beavers have been you know wandering around out on the ice like this it, it doesn't seem to make sense especially you know a little at, at, at one <laughs> point along that west stretch there's just so many footprints out on the ice it's ridiculous you know it's hard to imagine what a beaver might have been doing and we were left stumped this morning however I'm pretty sure taking a second look at it now I have the answer the key to this mystery can you tell me what it is anybody have a guess <laughs> it's the geese it's the geese not the beavers at all, but the geeses have been coming out and uh, spending time in the water when they can or when they want to or whatever. Any case, um, which brings us to the matter of the geese and whether or not I still believe they're going to have eggs within a couple of weeks here as timed with the full moon. Uh, and I don't think so. And it is significant that that full moon is not after the equinox because it's typically the full moon after the equinox when they lay their eggs. So this this one's going to come one or two sleeps before the equinox and it's just not the right moon. So I think what we're having here, again, I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I think we're having a Sametsukis, the deceptive moon. which means this is a leap year, so to speak. In the lunar count, we have the 13th cycle that comes in, and this is it, the Sametsukisum. Um, so it kind of extends the cold, the time of winter, but it also ends up extending the summer, because the frog moon, if you stick with my videos, you'll see the frog moon ends up jumping over and becoming a summer moon. So where we'd normally have, <laughs> it's a goose couple, and I want to talk about that. This morning, as Carol and I walked around out here, um, we did see some geese here and there on the wide south pool. There was a, uh, a couple of geese out on the river you know, along the ice, everywhere you look, there are goose couples. Um, along the open crags and near the islands and on the potential nesting areas and that kind of a thing, there are goose couples. So the coupling that's expected before the nesting is happening. Um, but the occupation of the pond, as though they were going to nest within the next couple of weeks, is not happening. 
<laughs> so we are in the Saw Mitsukis, I'm very sure. Um, but look, there's another, another goose couple passing now. Yeah, they're all coupled up, which is as would be expected during Beat That some the Eagle Moon, our last moon. But uh, were this not the leap year, so to speak, they'd already be out here squabbling for nesting territories, and uh, it would only be a couple of weeks before we saw eggs. Now I'm expecting, um, I'm expecting them to lay eggs early, early of the full moon of the next of the next cycle, but uh, but in the next cycle rather than this one. Any case, um, I already checked my traps this morning out and about town. Uh, nobody's in the traps, so I'm just gonna leave them as they are. Check them again tomorrow, and I think I'm gonna pull traps tomorrow that aren't hitting. Uh, for today, going back to the house, getting back into the project. And we'll see how that goes. Should get at least one or two more strips uh, of the design done today. We just kind of got a start on it last night.